to refocus what they do on the more sophisticated higher-end talent or on recruiting actually very unskilled talent, uh, which often isn't recruited anyways. It's just found, um, or it finds its own job. Um, and I think there'll be a big growth in the use of uh, temporary and consultant and uh, other uh, contingent forms of labor. So agencies that focus on recruiting those people will see uh, a fairly uh, positive uh, future. Do you, to tell me this, I don't know, have you heard of, uh, I was reading the other day about a, uh, a new site called Jobber Files, and it's set up by college grads, it's based in Boston, and it's a, it's a, it's a site where people can bid on how much money, or more importantly, how little they are willing to be paid for their work, so it's, and it's all public. Do you see any funny trends, any desperation in recruitment such as that in the U.S. market that we might see soon? Yeah, I think you might. I think you'll find that bartering for jobs, uh, and you can look at it two ways. You can look at it in the desperation economy, or you can look at it as simply the market economy. And like so many things, are traded for their value. And uh, if you are willing to pay you know, more for something than I am, then uh, more power to you. But eventually the market will determine uh, what those uh, what those skills are worth, and we're seeing this in a lot of sites here in America, like Elance, which is another site here where people can put themselves up for work. Uh, this kind of work is typically work that you can do virtually. So someone in New Zealand could bid on work in the United States, uh, and uh, we're finding lots of people from India and other countries are doing that. So if I want my website done. I can put it on Elance, I can look the list the specifications, and then people from all over the world can bid on that job. So I think you're going to find, and then I can choose whoever I want to do it based on their, you know, my, my perception of their skills and ability and their price. Uh, I think you're going to find a lot of that uh, increasing you know, tremendously. And any work that can be done virtually is now global. Uh, and, you know, if there's work in, Australia, in New Zealand that I could do from here, uh, I could theoretically at least bid for that kind of work if I knew about it and if the employer was willing to uh, use me in that way and if the legal system allowed me to do that. <clears throat> and there are some issues, uh, of course, that will uh, crop up here. Our legal systems all over the world are always way behind the reality of the job market. So um, we're already lagging in uh, how we look at the law. Okay, okay, thank you for that. Um, so what I'd like to ask you now is uh, what, what, what are some old recruiting tools, tools that are, are, are dead because of these new, this new environment we're in? Now, it's hard to say they're dead, but they're certainly uh, in a recession, <laughs> if I can use that word, or they're, going, or they're going to become far less important. I think the traditional resume is uh, finally fading away. I've been saying this for a decade, so I'm probably wrong here, but uh, it seems to have an incredible amount of resiliency. But I think the, the uh, CV or the traditional resume that you and I probably uh, spent many hours crafting when we were younger uh, is something that's being replaced by your profile and your social network, whether it's on LinkedIn or Facebook. That profile is increasingly becoming how you're going to be known to the world. And the advantage of that is that it's a living, not dead document. It's generally up to date, and it contains more information about you than a, than a CV does. It's certainly got a more complete view of your life in it, which raises privacy issues, which we, could, we can talk about that if you want to later. Uh, but uh, I think those are moot points for the most part. Um, so I think that that's in danger. I think the uh, traditional applicant tracking tool that is simply a device for storing resumes or CVs and retrieving them is obviously also in jeopardy. Uh, <clears throat> most of them have begun to transform themselves into more uh, tools for social networking and that can use these profiles, but that's going to be an essential requirement. And I think you're going to find that most recruiting is going to focus around social networks of some type uh, and is going to become uh, <clears throat> a much more collective activity where recruiters will create their own communities or agencies can have communities that they tap into and build uh, credibility with 
uh, and then help those people find uh, places to work and things to do. Uh, but it's a very fluid and changing environment, and sort of the static world of, you know, filling out a CV, uh, mailing it or emailing it. Email is also dead as a tool for recruiting. I think you're going to find it's Twitter, it's instant messaging, it's uh, Skype, it's other tools that are going to replace email. And as many young people tell me today, email is only used by my grandfather or my father. Uh, but I certainly never use it or rarely use it, um, and it's certainly not the preferred media for a college student today. Many universities here in America are no longer giving out email addresses to students because students have no need for them, don't use them. Uh, so lots of things in that space. It's moving so quickly that uh, you have to move into this uh, mobile recruiting space, social recruiting, and, uh, and mobile, uh, and uh, you've got to have – Ways to reach people on their on their phone, uh, ways to reach them through instant messaging and Twitter and uh, other kinds of uh, emerging kinds of advertising that will show up on the telephone. Okay, so let's talk some specific tools. Um, reading your your one of your tweets or twits, as you say, um, Malcolm Gladwell's view of social network has been likened to a nun's view of the Kama Sutra. <laughs> and that was by Maria Popova on Design Observer blog. Where do you think social networks, what, 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 you know, if, if for recruiters and talent managers here in New Zealand, what would your advice be on how to use uh, social networks as specific tools? Well, I think they have to make the social network the hub of what they're doing. And to me, that becomes the, the core of your recruiting efforts. It's where you use that to reach out to candidates, to attract them to uh, either your agency or to your company. It's where you uh, basically communicate with and, in a way, screen candidates for their fit and suitability for a job. Through, and you do this through a variety of tools. It can be... Uh, it could be formal assessments uh, that are part of your social network, but more likely it's going to be informal assessment of people just like you might do in an interview. Uh, it's going to be looking at their social profile. It's going to be asking their friends about them. It's going to be reaching out to that referral network around them. And uh, there's already a company here in the U.S. called Chexter, and what Chexter does is uh, send out emails to people that you have indicated that you know and ask these people if they would just answer anonymously a few questions about you. And these are multiple choice questions that uh, help to determine your fit for a job or whether you really have a skill or not. And they might say, have you ever actually seen Mike host a radio show before? Uh, how many times have you seen him do that? And you might have told me you've done it a hundred times, but I have no way to really verify that but I can ask your network of friends or listeners, and they tell me, oh, yeah, I listen to them every day or whatever, and I get verification of those skills. So it's a much more immediate sort of process of getting information about people, and it's more uh, authentic, and it's, more, uh, it's probably much more accurate than what you're going to get from a CV or from traditional screening tools. Um, I think so, so to me that social network is the core, and that's what you have to really – spend time to develop, and it's what you really have to nurture and find people that can communicate using those tools uh, and actually build uh, relationships with people online. I think okay. that relationship piece is a, is a challenge. If I could just interject this, that you know, many yeah. of us um, think you can't have a relationship virtually. Uh, and I think that if you're probably over 40 or 45, that's pretty much your belief. Whether you would say that or not, I think inside you're believing, I don't think you can really have a relationship with somebody that you had never met. And yet I can tell you right now that people in their 20s and 30s are having relationships that are very deep and very significant with people who they have never met and may never meet uh, because of the nature of the Internet and the virtual world, the social networks. So I think you're going to see that having relationships with people, recruiting people that you have never met, hiring and having people work for you that you've never met, uh, while it's, it's not that common today, although it does happen, it's going to become much, much more common in the next five to ten years. 
Okay, so just moving to uh, uh, looking backwards for a second, what are some of the past big trends that haven't worked? Uh, that's a good question. That's a really uh, thoughtful one. I, I, uh, I'm going to have to uh, ponder that for a moment here. The, the, uh, the things that we thought would work, um, uh, that's, a, that's a really good one. I can't, I can't, think, of, uh, I can't right. think of anything. Have you got any example I'll, 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 you've got in mind? I'll give you time to, to ponder that. So uh, when you're talking about social networks and things like that and, and these great tools and people having very intimate relationships, and they don't even know each other online. Do you think the recruitment world and the talent and pe people searching for talent are exploiting them? And what companies can you tell us about that you see are really using these cleverly, these 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 methods? Well, I think I think right there in New Zealand, you've got a couple. You have Deloitte that's doing a fabulous job, um, and I think you've probably got a few other organisations as well. <clears throat> Actually, there's been quite a lot of innovative thinking uh, in the social networking space uh, out of uh, New Zealand and Australia, uh, maybe partly because you're down under, so to speak, and uh, have a need to you know, maybe connect outside uh, virtually more than other people in more populated parts of the world do. But, you know, I think that um, uh, there are uh, many examples, uh, especially... On, from organizations that are recruiting young people. And, of course, that's obviously where it's going to start because young people are already uh, aware and you know, comfortable with using those kind of tools. So at the college recruiting level, it's going to be an increasingly used tool. And I think as you reach higher age groups, less so. Uh, and I think it's a lesson of social media is that it, one size doesn't fit all. And you probably do have to uh, evolve over time. We'll evolve to everyone or virtually everyone being in social media. But for right now, if you're recruiting a baby boomer, you're probably going to find yourself using more traditional methods, and that's probably appropriate. And as you move down the age group, you need to begin to focus more on the social media and the mobile technologies uh, if you're going to attract people. So... Um, the companies that I think are doing this well around the world are some of the biggest ones, like IBM, uh, KPMG, and Deloitte have done extremely good jobs of that. Uh, I think you also find some of this happening in uh, India, around Tata, and some other companies are doing a fabulous job with uh, figuring out how to really leverage things in the virtual world for recruiting and use that to their benefit. Uh, and also to use people virtually in terms of getting work done. So we've got a, we've, right. we're in a big we're in a big transitional time in the world about how we work. Uh, and you know we've been grown up. Most of us that are uh, boomers for sure have grown up in a world of physical place, going to the office, uh, working eight to five, and that's increasingly foreign to young people who say, why can't I? Why do I have to go to an office? Uh, why can't I work from wherever I am? And uh, why 8 to 5? I may work 8 to midnight today, and I may not work at all tomorrow. Uh, you know, why don't you judge me on what I do, not what, how much time I put in, and so forth. So big, big sea change is underway in how we think about work, and, and our, our mental picture of work is changing. And it uh, probably okay, hasn't so happened uh, in 100 years. Okay, so let's move on to that. Let's talk the good, good gritty stuff. With, 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 with the sea change you're talking about, which is fascinating to us, what, I believe you're a man who really believes in a great recruitment strategy that it matters. Would I be it correct? It matters tremendously, absolutely. <clears throat> Can you elaborate on that? Yeah, I think you, 